In part one of this two-week experiment, you will use titration data to determine the concentration and pKa of a weak acid. In the first week, you will determine the concentration and pKa of a weak acid by titration. In the second week, you will look at the capacities of buffer systems. During the titration of a solution, there are two ways to measure a change in pH. You have already encountered both of these in previous labs. First is using an indicator. As you know, this is an equilibrium solution which has a conjugate acid-base pair which are different colors. The point where the solution changes color, where the pH of the solution equals the pKa of the indicator, is the end point of the titration. This is usually very close to the equivalence point where the moles of base are equal to the moles of acid so the indicator can be used to show that this point has been reached. The second way to measure pH is using a pH meter. This will obviously tell you exactly what the pH of the solution you are titrating is so you can measure the pH as you titrate. In this experiment, you will be titrating a weak acid with a strong base. An example of what the titration curve from your experiment will look like is shown on the slide. Notice the almost linear region at the bottom of the curve. This is the buffer region. You will be looking at this in greater depth next week. Beyond the buffer section, the pH increases rapidly passing through the equivalence point, which is the inflection point of the curve. From this point, you can find the volume needed to reach the equivalence point, which you can then use to find the concentration of the weak acid. It can also be used to find the half equivalence point, and this allows you to calculate the pKa of the weak acid base on the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. You will need to manually determine the equivalence point of the reaction from your titration curve. To do this, draw two straight lines, one above and one below the large shift in pH surrounding the equivalence point. Draw a third line along the vertical part of the curve so that it intersects with both the previous two lines. Measure the distance between the two intersections of the first two lines with the third line. The exact center of the third line between the two intersections is the equivalence point. You will be titrating acetic acid, the acid found in vinegar, with sodium hydroxide. The reaction is shown on the slide. As you can see, at the equivalence point, the moles of sodium hydroxide are equal to the moles of acetic acid. Therefore, using the volume of sodium hydroxide used during the titration, the concentration of acetic acid can be calculated, as you have seen in previous labs. The percent by volume volume of acetic acid in vinegar can also be calculated, as you have seen in experiment 9. Remember, that vinegar is an entirely acetic acid, so the volume of acetic acid will be different than the volume of vinegar used. The Ka is another value you will be finding from your titration curve. Remember that this is the dissociation constant for acid and is dependent on the concentration of the hydronium ion, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base of acetic acid. There are two reactions happening. The reaction of acetic acid with sodium hydroxide gives us the information we need to calculate the concentration of the diluted acetic acid in solution. We'll use the reaction of the acetic acid with water to form an equilibrium to find the Ka. Because the pKa is found from the buffer region of the graph, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation can be used to find it.
How this is done is based on the titration curve, as shown on the next slide. Rearranging the pKa expression gives us this equation. Remember that when the concentration of a C acid and its conjugate base are equal, the log portion of the equation will equal zero, and the pH will be equal to the pKa. Note that in this case we are assuming that the added hydronium from water and the reaction of acetic acid with water are irrelevant. Graphically, the neutralization point can be easily found by dividing the volume of the equivalence point by 2. Interpolation to the y-axis from this point gives the point at which the pH is equal to the pKa and the concentration of the acetic acid and bases are equal. This experiment will be performed directly on a sample of commercial vinegar. Obtain 25 milliliters and transfer 10 milliliters to a 100 millimeter volumetric flask using a pipette. Dilute to the mark with deionized water and invert several times to mix the solution. Obtain a pH meter and do a two-point calibration to prepare it for analysis. Rinse a burette and fill it with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Pipette 25 milliliters of your diluted vinegar solution into a 250 milliliter beaker and add 75 milliliters of deionized water. Add a magnetic stir bar and place the solution on top of a magnetic stirrer. Be careful to keep the pH electrode away from the magnetic stir bar when you turn it on. Add sodium hydroxide in 2 milliliter aliquots and record the pH to two decimal places. The pH should be recorded after each addition or after a 0.5 change in pH, whichever comes first. This should give you enough data to plot your titration curve from which you can obtain the concentration of acetic acid in the vinegar you analyzed. Compare what you found to the value on the manufacturer's label, which is on the bottle. Next week, you will be performing the second part of this experiment, buffer systems.